is. Well, while we're on black, what about the Blackie brothers? Who are the Blackie brothers? There was famous um, PA brothers. Well, to <laughs> I remember seeing Blackie. I forget which was Blackie, which Blackie was Blackie, but they could drink. They drank like the rest of us breathe. You know what I mean? You sort of breathe in. Do you realise how much we breathe so far a day? They would have drunk that far. And um, one night, one of the blacks, I came back to the and he's on the floor outside of a trail dressed as a woman. Oh, well, don't fucking ask. I'm not asking. Leave it alone. And, and we did Hammersmith Odeon one night and, and they're blind drunk. And I'm climbing up the thing. And he fell off into the chairs. She must have got, they took him to hospital. An hour later, he come back and finished the load out. He was that drunk, he didn't know himself. And these black brothers, I mean, they had Blackie's Bar set up all over the place. That was one of the... I remember going to somewhere in Newcastle once, probably on a British tour. If I could figure out who was supporting. Might have been a pretty things back then, but I don't know. And um, the first thing in the hotel was the finest room. They do quite often they, they, uh, in the early 70s, Bob would book a blow room. So we could skin up, but in other words, it was Blackie's bar room, so nobody wanted them in there. So they had to get a separate room. And I remember these two crew guys nicking this piano, taking it up the stairs along the corridor in this room. And that the bar got sorted out in the afternoon, long before the gig was over, which was kind of arse upwards, if you ask me. But there you go, that's the Black Brothers. Wasn't there business cards for various rooms on a floor in Europe? Where'd you get you got too much friggin' information. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I had Mark, Mike's continual word disco. I think Bob had these printed up. Rick had the Magic Finger Tips Club. Ricky. And um, Mike's place, I think it was. It was somebody's bar and grill and say, so you'd have a card to come into my room and stuff. And it's funny because various crew members come into my room and the drinkers went someplace else. And you've got to give these guys their due. We'd all be, and I'll be in bed, you know, la, 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 and I sort of. <laughs> Gone. I wake up in the morning, the room was all tidy and everybody gone. That's all right. Lovely. And this went on for went on for some years. I was just about to tell you a story about a sweet thing, but I better not. I'm told there was only one person ever barred for life from any of the clubs, and that was John Coughlin. It was blackballed, blackballed, and then redballed and sent. Around. Yeah, he was get seen. He got sent off. Bad could be. Um, as I said, John was fabulous when he's nice, and I do think the break up with his first wife. He was never the same after that, whether it hurt him deep somehow. I know I make funny of it, but somehow he never, never, he was never the same after that, to me anyway. He was never, you could never quite reach him anymore, and it was, which is a shame, because it's still like that between me and him now. There's still a certain, I don't know what it is. And Nuff keeps saying, no, Spud or John's fine, you know. And it's just, he's not the bloke I can remember on the bus when he was 19, as I said to you. And I don't know why that's like that. What did you ask me when I come out with that answer? Just about John being. Oh, yeah. You know, he, was, he says he, well, he tells us he was the only person who ever got barred from one of these clubs. He got barred from every frigging where did Spud. He'd do all sorts of weird things, and I can see his frustration as well. In fact, they used to send him back to Dr. Robert, the famous Dr. Rob. They just give him a B12 jab. Hi, man, how's things? Okay. Where the fuck did he come from? Where's Spud gone? He'd be fine for a little while, so he'd say to us next time he gets like, give him a bag of peanuts. I'm fucking not going to send him to London, it's cheaper to give him a bag of peanuts, you know. Um, but he was, um, we'd be having dinners and he didn't like the record company stuff and he was probably right at the time. There were a fucking bunch of sick offence, a lot of them. That doesn't mean they've got a problem with them. They're a necessary evil at the time. Um, and we have too many muse, I just say, oh, fucking record company don't understand me. No, they don't, love. They can't sell you, that's what it is. Um, but he would suddenly would be at this, you know, someplace, a bloody great long table, he'd just get up and walk through it. I mean, through it. People's dinners, you know. Got your fucking dinner. Don't like you. La, la, la. And there was this lovely guy, David Hofstadter, and he tore into him. As I said, something went wrong with Spud. It wasn't, it wasn't fair. Something got... Something checked out of his brain very early on.